Disgaea 5 was the first game in the series for me, and I must admit that it probably would have been a better idea to start with an earlier game. From what I understand, each game in the series continues to add on to the battling system, leaving the latest, 5, with the most complex system. This is 100% true. Do not get this game unless you are fairly familiar with JRPGs and are ready to learn a whole lot because oh man this game is so confusing. So yeah, I have finally finished playing Disgaea 5 Complete Edition on my Switch, I started this game like a year ago, and today we are going to be taking a look at my opinion on it. Most people come to the Disgaea series looking for an over-the-top, super complex and fun battling system. This is exactly what Disgaea 5 offers. It shines with all the different mechanics working throughout the battles. There is honestly way too many to go over in this video. Now I kinda just bought this game because I don't know I felt like it. I really had no idea what I was getting myself into, and I was so overwhelmed. Throughout the game, all sorts of different mechanics are added, but even right at the beginning, there's so much stuff to know. I had to search up pages on how everything works, and I still have no idea how half the systems function. Honestly, I just got to a point where I understood the basics and some more advanced stuff, and I stopped there, relying completely on that to get me through the game. So now after playing the game for countless hours, I do believe I probably could have been a lot better, but I made it through. I really just didn't have the time to learn all these different systems. So I must warn you, if you want to fully understand all this game has to offer in terms of battling mechanics, be prepared to put in hundreds of hours, but that is all I will say. Usually I would go much more deep into battling, but that could be an entire 20 minute video that I really don't want to make. So despite what I've just said, the part of the battling system that I understood was actually really fun. As a whole, each battle takes place on a small map that is sometimes manipulated to create interesting level design that was surprisingly genius at some points. You deploy a bunch of your characters and move around to defeat all the enemies. Unlike a lot of other JRPGs, all of your allies go before the enemies, and then all the enemies go. This brings a lot more strategy to the game. While this does seem pretty basic, there's a still a lot here to like. Mainly, the sheer over-the-top insanity of the battling. This game prides itself on the stupid amount of damage you can do, and it is really wacky. While I never got super high with my damage or levels, it was still incredibly satisfying to see numbers in the 10 and 100 thousands. Also, just the way all your characters attack is amazing. All of them have special moves that are just so over the top with explosions and all sorts of dumb stuff. This game really never takes itself seriously, and honestly it's a real blast. All of these add up to create a super entertaining battling system, which is a good thing since there's really not much else to do except fight. Plus, at least the main story battles can be up to around 40 minutes long for a single fight. Another thing that this game does very weirdly is the difficulty. Basically, this game lets you manipulate it however you want with this thing called the cheat shop. Difficulty is mainly based around the levels of your enemies and allies. You level up, of course, by earning experience points. Sometimes this can become a little unbalanced when I would use only my favorite and best characters, and then they're like level 100 while everyone else is level 10, but that usually wasn't a huge problem. It just encouraged me to use a more broad range of characters. But then the cheat shop comes in. Apart from just tweaking how certain combat mechanics work, you can specifically set the difficulty of enemies to 20 different levels. You can also change the rewards you get from a level. While I didn't really mess around with this stuff a lot, when I realized that playing this game normally would require a lot of grinding, I changed them around a bit. I was rich in currency so I turned down my money earned and instead turned my experience points up. 
oh yeah, you can't just turn something up by itself. You have to lower something else so you can prioritize what you want. All of this is really unique and lets people of all experience levels have fun with the game. Although, I must admit, some of the characters available in the DLC are super overpowered. So yeah, I could go farther, but that's all I'll say about the combat in this video. Apart from just being overwhelmed by the combat, I was also very overwhelmed by the amount of content, especially with the complete edition. The main story itself is pretty strenuous, but there's also tons of DLC missions as well. Apart from just main mission, there's multiple different endless modes, like one where you upgrade weapons. It seems like if you have enough time and stamina, you're meant to play this game for hundreds of hours, slowly leveling up your characters until they can deal millions of damage. While this would be fun, I could never grind for that long. But if that's something you're into, this would be a good game for you. On the topic of the story, it is rather interesting actually. Of course it's not super deep or complex or something, but that's okay, sometimes it's nice to have a simple story with a happy ending. The story more bases itself on the fun characters, which are, well, very entertaining. Much like combat, everyone is very over the top and has all sorts of unique backstories, motivations, and personalities. While I could see some people getting very annoyed by them, I was entertained by the insane voice acting and humorous writing. I mean this game is seriously pretty funny, not as much as some other JRPGs, but it was still great. One thing I must complain about is the graphics. I don't know if this is exclusive to the Switch or not, but things get very pixelated, especially when characters get close to the screen and there's some of their battle animations. Honestly, since I didn't go very deep into the combat, I think that's about it we have to talk about. One last point, I really enjoyed the hub world in this game, even if it technically was kind of boring. The music is nice and you can find all of your recruits roaming around. But yeah, as a whole, Disgaea 5 Complete Edition was a very confusing and also rather fun game that I would only recommend to a very specific group of people. It was alright, but I doubt I'll ever end up getting any other games in the series. I'll give it a B-. Well, thanks everyone for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and hopefully you find this video helpful. I hope to see you guys in another video. Bye!